what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so we're talking about that scream 6 teaser that dropped earlier this morning i'm going to talk a little bit more about that a little bit more about that image that came out of our exclusive first look at ghostface in the movie that came out from entertainment weekly and go over some of the comments that matt and tyler radio silence had to say in this exclusive interview that was released alongside this image of ghostface in this worn down ghostface mask of what i can only assume is of course something from the past so we got that teaser this morning it was mostly just seeing the four woods world survivors with the new characters on the subway having mindy get attacked at the end seeing different nods to other horror movies a nod to wes craven's cursed uh a nod to friday the 13th jason takes manhattan a nod to I, there were so many things. The one that stood out to me was definitely Jason. Obviously, Ghostface 2, since it's their movie. And then these other references. They even had a reference to their own recent work with Ready or Not, where somebody was present dressed as Samara Weaving's character from that movie, So, which I thought was a nice little nod to that. So all of these different references and the DNA that they still are trying to keep of Scream, but doing it in this fashion, I appreciate it. Because we never had a Scream movie, I believe, set on any Halloween type of setting. So the way they're going to weave in those nods and homages to other other things in the horror in the horror spectrum doing it in this matter via the costumes on halloween obviously that's great i think i even saw the babadook which is we know is tara's favorite but i want to jump into these comments from matt and tyler before i talk about this image of the worn down ghost face mask now Matt and Tyler have explained a few things regarding Scream 6, it's mostly about the characters that have come to New York and why they're here. Uh, they've started out by saying they have all come to New York to go to school, said Tyler Gillette. Uh, one of the things that was so exciting to us was bringing the story and bringing the slash icon into a new location. I, th I think across the board for the writers, Guy and Jamie as well, this was such a fun opportunity to explore what what that would feel like bringing the world of scream into that setting the teaser is a good example of how we're having fun with that throughout the movie that is one of many sequences in the movie that uses the city really to its benefit and in surprising and thrilling ways uh they go on to say that the uh this article mentions of course that courtney cox is back gail weathers they chimed in talking about gail weathers they said it's always good to see gail weathers and how her life has evolved it's really nice to see gail in her element in new york now in her element i assume means she will be acting somewhat similar to how we saw her in screen two uh and just kind of being what we know she had going on for herself prior to her return in Screen 5. Just seeing how she acts in New York and seeing what her life is like. Uh, we know we're expecting to see her her house. That's one thing we hope to see going off of the filming that went on this past summer and the idea that we will see her house. So they also had comments about Hayden. They said that Hayden was wonderful. She was really great. It was fun to have her around to tell us about Screen 4. She had a lot of great stories she got to share. It's that Screen family. It's continuing to grow for us. Now... They, they were asked about Samara Weaving in her role. All they simply said was she's in the movie. <laughs> we can't really, because of spoiler stuff, explain that, I guess. But we've been wanting to work with Samara again since the minute we wrapped on Radio or Not. So it was just a joy to get her out to Montreal to shoot with us. I mean, your guess is as good as mine is how, what her role will be. Seems like she has something very important going on in the movie since they're so tight-lipped about it. So they also confirmed that, of course, Roger L. Jackson will be back. No surprise there. He'll be voicing Ghostface once again. And they seem to have alluded to this new mask and why there is a new mask and there's a reason for this new looking mask now roger will voice ghostface and talk a smidge about and he's talking a smidge about this new version of the mask featured in the film which again was the image that you see on your screen they said that it would all make sense in the context that you see in the movie that's what tyler gillette said that was another one of the really interesting risk and creative the creative approaches in this movie it's meta in a different way and the mask very much factors into that now, they said it was not an arbitrary choice. That's what ben Bettinelli Open said. So they did this for a reason. What is going on with this mask? Going off of what Vera Nan has stated is happening in this theater-like museum-esque location people have been spotting online. If you don't want any real spoilers, click away. Again, I'm saying these are comparable to finding out the grass is green on the other side because that's really my thoughts on this. I don't think these are major at all. Um, it seems as though there are costumes from Ghostface sprees of the past being held up somewhere in this movie. This is going off of Vera Nan's tweets and some behind-the-scenes images. Now, where are the masks for these costumes? The masks are missing. Do we have a case where somebody is going around doing something similar to what Roman did in Scream 3 with Marine Prescott pictures, but doing it now in the vein of Ghostface masks? Could you be seeing something like that go on? Or given that also in the uh, 
teaser we see a shot of Ghostface with one version of that mask that we don't see in this exclusive EW picture. Could we have two killers working against each other and not knowing that one exists? And we could have a Ghostface versus Ghostface scenario play out. And also, of course, for the people out there who think it's Stu Mocker, I will say that, yes, there is a chance that Stu Mocker will be in Scream 6. However, if they're trying to keep it grounded in the sense that they're not doing anything out of the ordinary, as unrealistic as some people find Roman to be, then Stu will not be back. <laughs> if they're keeping it grounded, Stu is not going to be back. Uh, Stu coming back is far more unrealistic than anything with Scream 3, just to throw that out there. However, could you have somebody again that is tied to the past that has had access to all of these past past evidences from the other sprees that now wants to just wrap up loose ends they're coming for all the survivors they'll they'll end it all by going for sydney and then that'll be that could it be something like that where you have somebody who wants all of this to end it could be leslie mocker it could be somebody connected to Stu mocker it could be somebody connected to the carpenters maybe again it's tara's dad i know i had a video like that out once or it could be none of that and it could be one of the new characters and they're trying to throw you off and they're doing a very good job at doing that however also just to wrap it up they said something about nev campbell now they said that nev campbell's absence their departure affected the script greatly. He argued, or Gillette admitted this, he argued that there's a silver lining to the actress's absence evidence in the movie's depiction of the young survivors from the previous film. We love Nevin, we're huge fans of Sidney Prescott, but it, it felt like there's an opportunity to really dig into this new crop of characters, and I think people will be really surprised and pleased with how successfully this movie does that. I know I will be. Because again, when they say that it affected it greatly, I do want to add this. It could be a case where she just had several pages of material, but that those pages could have equated to maybe 10 minutes of screen time. Let's that is a possibility of something like that. Even though the material they wrote was a great amount or what was written was a great amount, the actual screen time it translated in wasn't much. So greatly affecting the script and tr how it translates into screen time is different. That's just how I always have interpreted that type of stuff. Because screenplays can read a lot longer to you and appear longer than how you actually execute it when those are done. But you guys can let me know what you think is going on with this old mask and why it's being used down in the comment section below. Because apparently there's a reason for it. What do you think is going on in the teaser with Mindy? If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications and miss a video in the description. I'll have links to all my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video